welcome to the module on international trade and location of firms. In the context of international trade, basically we refer to the process of exchange to the rest of the world, where the goods and services are exchanged across the different nations. So this kind of trade contributes to the world economy and thereby the communable traded commodities are television sets, clothes, machineries, capital goods, raw materials, and all are being transacted across the world economy. So we have seen that international trade has an exceptionally hit us explode across the globe, particularly in the service sector, in the manufacturing sector, and also referring to warehousing, communication, advertising, and distribution. So in the context of international trade, we can see that it has explored across the international business and it has increased day by day. Among the international trade, the most important player had been the agents of the foreign trade. So by foreign trade, we mean the exchange of capital goods and services, which is spread across the international borders or the territories. And by doing that, it contributes significantly to the GDP, that is the gross domestic product. Also, it has been seen that international trade is also affected by the historical, social, economic, and political environment of the economy or of the business environment. boils down to the concept of location of firms and how is it interlinked with the process of international trade. So in this context, we define a multinational firm because whenever we are discussing with the advent of the multinational corporations across the globe within the era of globalization, we have seen that in most of the advanced nations, the MNCs are the growth drivers and thereby the MNCs want to locate themselves in those areas where they will earn profit but at a lower minimum cost. So this brings down to the notion of how to define a multinational firm. A multinational firm is defined as an enterprise that controls and manages production establishments, plants, located in at least two countries. So that means a multinational firm has to be spread across the globe whereby the two nations are to be situated and how this multinational firm is basically exploring its business across these two nations. This brings down two important terminologies. One is called the parent firm and is called the affiliate. The parent are the entities located in the country which is the source and thereby it actually goes for controlling the productive facilities and the affiliate is located in the other countries. So when we talk about the affiliate, it's basically the host country where the MNC wants to set up its unit, but the parent firm is basically referred as the original notion of the body. So the question occurs in terms of ownership. When we talk about ownership, we say that ownership is the result of foreign direct investment. Because in case of the foreign direct investment, it has a direct affiliate with the host country and thereby a liaison takes place with the host country government. And thereby we can see either a cross-border acquisition takes place or we talk about a greenfield investment. So in all these both cases we observe that an affiliate has to be strong enough to set up in the host country and thereby we can see that the multinational firm is well stated. So here we can observe that the ownership is the result of foreign direct investment, which is basically spread out across these two notions. This brings down to the most important model, which is basically governing the entire structure of the location of firms. That is called OLI model. That is ownership, location and internationalization. So we refer to the terms one by one. The first letter which comes up is the ownership. So what is this ownership, which is the very first priority of the affiliate to set up? So ownership is basically a type of an advantage that is stemming from the firm-specific asset that allows the firm to compete in 
unfamiliar environments. Here unfamiliar environment means that the firm does not have a complete knowledge about the economic, political, socio-cultural or socio-economic environment of the host country. So firm will be the first one to launch the product and based on that the other issues come in. So this is basically inherent within the ownership status of the firm and thereby if the ownership is strong enough then it can compete with all kind of constraints that it may face in a business environment. So this ownership is basically direct when we look at the percentage of the share which is owned by the foreign firms in the domestic economy. And this is basically channelized through the foreign direct investment where an affiliate is required to be established. The second important criteria that comes under OLI model is locational advantage. Locational advantage means that if a particular country is considered to be most communicated or connected with major ports of the world or it has some locational advantages in terms of geographical or in terms of time zones, then also this advantage will be enjoyed by the MNC and which will drive the MNC to locate its firm. So basically it makes it efficient to exploit the firm asset in all the productive facilities that is being done. The third criteria comes as internalization. So whenever we talk about the internalization or internationalization, which means within the firm how the exploitative practices can take place in terms of the resources. That means within the firm we can go for specialization, we can go for more specific division of labor so that they can basically reap the benefits from ownership as well as location. So both of them are embedded within the internationalization move. This brings down to the important question in this regard that why do MNCs relocate? This is basically one of the most important concern when we refer to any kind of discussion of international trade and how is it related with the location of the firms. The first one is to be present in the developed countries markets closer to the customers. This is very much important because MNCs have to go for a market seeking attitude. So by market seeking attitude it means it wants to explore those markets which are large or which are enormous and which have a large capacity of the customer's base. Thereby they can modify the products, they can make it internationally competitive and there can be more increase in the level of closer substitutes. So based on all of them we can see that greater the market strength, greater the number of closer substitutes, more will be competitiveness and thereby one of the most motivating factor for the MNCs to relocate so that to attract a larger consumer base. Secondly, to be near the source and cluster of major technological developments. This is also very important because whenever we talk about the technology, we mainly refer to the digital technology or the digital platforms. So thereby the country which is more and more open to the technological innovations or the newer ideas will make it very much clear for this type of MNCs to locate. So basically we can see that the manufacturing, the distribution, the management, these are the most important pillars of any organization. So whether it's a private or a public, in terms of hierarchical basis, we look at the management, we look at the manufacturing or the productive capacity, and thereby we look at the distributional aspect. So keeping all of these factors, we can see that the foreign company should look as a listening and a learning post. That means, first of all, it has to follow a learning curve because by the learning curve only, it can gain experience, expertise, which can contribute to the knowledge base and also develop the product. At the same time, it will also be crucial in developing the major clusters or the substitutes. And the third important component will be to participate in the research and development programs. 
because for long term growth and to attain long term stability research and development investments are a must and this is quite embedded within the nature of an mnc so whenever an mnc wants to operate in any economy the most important criteria is how to invest in the research and development programs which will take care of the pharma sector or will take care of the patents or the copyrights and hence they can relocate and thereby they can operate this is also important for an mnc is to take care of the cost factors or the risk factors in international business one of the risk factors is to avoid the dangers of protectionism in the target countries so whenever we talk about any kind of mnc wants to relocate its base of operations one of the factor may be that in their own home country there may be some restrictive trade or trade has to face a lot of constraints in terms of paying high import tax or in terms of restriction in the quota so there will be many other as uh, avenues by which the trade can be restricted the second point that comes in is to win public contracts whenever the question of public contracts come in it's basically about the public ownership that crops in and the third one is to exploit the strength of host countries domestic currency so when i talk about the domestic currency it means that the currency needs to depreciate in most of the cases we have seen that the instability of the currency emerges from the depreciation of the currency which makes it more volatile cost of the import is on the rise and this will have an depleting effect on the manufacturing so based on that mnc is also wants to relocate so that the strength of the host country's domestic currency can be taken up because they can be export oriented and by that the depreciation may be one of the blessing for the mnc's to operate because cost because exports will be more and more attractive this boils down to the most important phenomena which is interlinked with the location of firms or which is interlinked with the process of international trade and that is none other than globalization so when we talk about globalization we want to relate it with the location of firms so what is that it is the behavior of the firms who were initially called transnational corporations where we can see that the tnc wants to come up with its home country's manpower or resources and they want to set up their affiliate in the host country unlike the mncs because mncs want to start up from the scratch where they want to exploit the domestic resources of the home country so when we talk about globalization we refer to behavior of the firms their organization their changing technology and more importantly the most important aspect that they play in the production in the distribution in the finance and also they want to check in the economies of scale so thereby whenever we look at the globalization aspect and want to link up with the location of the firms first of all we want to understand the motive of the tncs the motive of the tncs is very straightforward that is profit maximization and also at times sales maximization so you know to achieve these targets it can actually go for changing technology in the production field looking at the distributional aspects taking care of the finance and its control and more importantly looking after the economies of scale because thereby it can lower the cost of production and it can operate secondly we can see one of the most important dynamics in an economy is changing behavior of consumers because the consumers taste and preferences are very much dynamic in nature which is reflected in their lifestyles in their consumption patterns and also in their habitats so in all these cases the most important point is how they are declining their loyalty to the national producers and they are more attracted to the imported goods 
This will also be related with the dimensions of globalization, which takes care of socio-cultural dimension, whereby the national and the international economies of trade, production and finance are related. So basically in all these cases, the most important thing that comes in is driven by the action of the TNCs is that the power is shifted from the state to the firms. So whenever we look after the state or whenever we look after the firms, how the power gets shifted from one point to the other and that is how the globalization and the location of firms are related to each other. Moreover, with globalization also we refer to how the boundaries are extended, how the information is per located, and most importantly, how the geographical locations across the globe can be explored. And this is because of the declining cost of providing the goods and services to the corners of the global market. That is one of the most important positive consequence of globalization. And that will definitely drive the MNCs to locate their farms in those spaces where the cost is less but the demand is excessive. So a rapid expansion of FDI is one of the most important fallout of this phenomena. This is also embedded with capital market liberalization, where capital market controls are lifted up, capital mobility has taken up a radical shape, and thereby the role of the government has also been modified. Because government has been playing a very supportive role and a catalytic role in making the FDI to come up in a bigger shape. Most importantly, the advent of technological revolution in terms of internets, in terms of information technology, has helped in the data collection, processing of the data, and consequently making more convenient for the firms and the people to come up in terms of different kind of apps and other services. This also relates to another important aspect which is also playing an important role with the location of the firms is called the regionalization. So globalization is the overall boundary. Within globalization, regionalization is another subset which is also important for the firms to notify when it will invest and where it will invest. So this is basically taking up its importance in the world economy, which has been taken up by the inability of 135 member countries to agree even on the agenda of the Millennium Round. Because it is seen that in the WTO World Trade Organization, most of these discussions or recommendations are taken up in view of the advanced nations because the region-specific issues are also important rather than looking at, at a broader policy. So the importance of the integrated global economic policies is likely to have a hard task from time to time, but regional approach to economic problems is more important because every region has its own demographic structure, has its own natural base, and more importantly, every region has its own strong and weak factors or strength and weaknesses. So based on that, we can see that region-specific problems can be addressed only by the region-specific policies rather than a broad overall policy. So it has seen that rapid international expansion of TNCs has made it very clear that regionalization is also one of the important driver of the firms to relocate. This also brings in about the nature of the firms, which is absolutely micro-specific and it looks into the word called localization of the firms. So whenever we are talking about the localization of the firms, it is basically very much area-specific, which is micro-specific, where the firms wants to come up in single unit or in clusters. And that is why, because it wants to develop some linkage effects with the other firms in terms of a demand-supply relationship. So one of the most important force where the firms are interested to come up is basically the production links which the firms want to develop. Secondly, wants to also benefit from the existing pool of the suppliers. This will make them at lower cost of production 
and they can also modify the product. They can go for more substitutes to come up and thereby they can benefit from it. More importantly, we have seen that the factors like finance, information, consulting, maintenance, all of them are also very much important in making the farms to excel or expedite. So this is another important factor which makes firms to be very much locally established when it talks about the finance, information, consulting, and maintenance. Here consulting also refers to the consultancy investments that can be done by the firms. Moreover, in the localization, we have seen that some kind of pool of trained and experienced labor, they are also needed. Because whenever the farms want to set up in a specific area, it also makes a survey about the availability of the specialized skills, which will also motivate the others to make up or to upgrade their skills. It is also important in terms of the cost of transport, because any localization also has an issue of transportation cost, which is absolutely micro-specific. There may be concentration of the consumers, because this is one of the density of the population. Because if the population is dense, then moreover the test and preferences will be more elaborate and that will automatically benefit or attract the firms to come up. So this is also very much inherent within the localization of the firms. Moreover, in terms of the political economy, that is in terms of the contracts, how negotiable contracts can be done with the transporters, or with the export promotion board members or any other governance issues. That is also very much location specific. So you have seen that first of all, we have discussed about the globalization, which is considered as a broader phenomena to influence the location of the firms. Secondly, we wanted to discuss on the region specific issues because every region is distinct from others in terms of economical, political, cultural, and even geographical features. And thirdly, we are more and more concentrating on the localized factors because these localized factors will be speaking in terms of skills, in terms of transportation cost, in terms of customer's base, and moreover in terms of the social contracts which are needed to be developed, either with the administrators or with the transporters or with the board members of different institutions or any other party. So this also refers that localization is a very important uh, aspect or a growth driver for location of the firms. Now we shall be concentrating on the advantages of the localization of the firms because what is the motivation or finally what are the incentives that the firms will do. First of all, it should try to control internationally mobile income generating ownership specific advantages because here skills are basically mobile. In terms of the mobility of the skills, they can relocate from one place to another and they can even shift from one job to other. So these farm specific advantages are actually tangible, but it can also be intangible like the better technology, wider markets, having a greater competition and how it is becoming superior to the other localized farms. This is very much important for an TNC to survive, how their products are more competitive, more superior to the existing ones. This also refers to the locational advantage where we talk about the target country, how it comes in. So by target country, basically we want to compare with the other nations in terms of the trade potentials. This can be due to the geographical distribution of the resources or those created by the government. For example, OPEC nations always wants to specialize in terms of export intensive commodities where or the oil rich products. So this also refers to interna internationalization as well as internalization and ownership specific advantages like in terms of property rights, like in terms of uncertainty of the buyers, 
quality control management, all these are taken up as a primary concern in terms of the locations. Moreover, we have seen the licensing with the foreign markets. This is also very much important because when a firm wants to open up any franchise, the licensing has to be done. It can be done in terms of ownership or in terms of internalization advantages by which they can capture the foreign markets and simultaneously they can take advantage of the OLI model that is ownership, location and internalization and thereby FDI can act as a stimulant factor in this regard. Moreover, we talk about the product cycle model. So whenever we talk about the product cycle model, it means how it st starts from a nascent stage with the help of the manufacturing base, it develops, modifies and finally reaches the mature or the advanced stage because of the technological know-how. At the same time, some relocation of production can also take place and recent developments can also help in this particular advantage. So in this particular discussion, we can see that internalization or the location of the firms as a result of globalization will take care of the economies of scale. Because the economies of scale, they can produce the product at a lower cost. It will also take care of the activities which are both backward and forward linkages with other firms where a demand supply relationship will be built up. Knowledge accumulation will take place, accumulation of skills also will take place and moreover they will be able to cater a larger target group of sophisticated customers. The global competitiveness is a very important word in order to survive in the field of international trade which definitely depends upon the local knowledge, how the knowledge gets transmitted in terms of skills, how the capability is being built up and how a kind of a tacit agreement can be done with the administrators or with the local bodies. So in all the location of the firms and international trade are complementary to each other whenever we bring in the concepts of internalization, ownership and location advantages within the regionalization, localization within the overall boundary of globalization and thereby the MNCs will be getting incentive to relocate their base of operations with at least two countries and thereby explore across the globe and also at the same time reap benefits out of it. <music>